Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to this special Sunday night edition of A Current Affair. In a moment, the latest developments in our long-running Hey Dad investigation and the family member who's come forward with some startling claims. But first, the catastrophic earthquake in Japan. And tonight we're crossing live to the Japanese city of Sendai, whose port was wiped out by the tsunami. Carl Stefanovic has only just arrived there. Carl, good to talk with you, although under dreadful circumstances, it does look deceptive orderly behind you. Just put us in the picture on, on exactly where you are. It is a very strange feeling, actually, Tracy, to have come into this city, a city that we haven't really seen much of in the last couple of days. We've seen the port, not the city itself. It's a city that is uh, pretty much like uh, any city in Australia, any large city, a million people. The difference is that a million people here at the moment are displaced. A lot of people are just wandering around aimlessly, not knowing where to go, because quite simply, they have no place to go. A lot of these buildings behind me, they live in these uh, residential towers, these apartment complexes. They can't go back into those apartment complexes until they have been checked as a result of the earthquake. There are lineups of cars. These cars behind me are lining up for essential services. Services, basic necessities, um, your bread, your milk, um, your water, and also for petrol. These lineups go for kilometres for just the basics of life. And as you head from the city centre, about 40 minutes drive normally out to the port, it's taking in excess of two hours. There are that many cars on the road because a lot of people are staying and actually living in their cars at the moment until they have some level of accommodation. There are 215,000 people in this city alone that have no place to go and that are in these evacuation centres that are sprinkled around the city at the moment. But down towards that port area, Tracy, that's where the real devastation happened for this city that has been wiped out down there and there are 300 people who have lost their lives. But certainly from the port as you head up further north along that coastline where that tsunami hit, that massive wall of water, that's where the real damage uh, has um, been, uh, you know, really affected on those coastlines. And there are a lot of people, a lot of people in communities, small communities, where 15, 16,000 people normally live, 10,000 of that population are unaccounted for. So imagine the effect that that is having on those communities. And it's very difficult to get aid in, to get anything in at the moment. The only aid coming in is by air and also the army. So it's a, it's a very... Um, awful situation in the city. It's uh, even worse as we head out further north uh, in what is shaping as a massive humanitarian disaster. OK. Carl, I want to talk to you in some detail about, uh, about the aid situation, also about the fears about those nuclear reactors. And we keep hearing the word meltdown. And I know you're going to speak with an Aussie very shortly. So we'll come back with you shortly. I know you've just landed there. We'll speak with you in just a few minutes. We will be back with Carl shortly. But now a major development in the Hey Dad scandal and tonight startling allegations in our long-running investigation from a woman very close to Robert Hughes, a member of his own family who claims the TV star indecently assaulted her. Ben McCormack has the inside story. Robert Hughes grabbed me, tickled me and touched me inappropriately, including on my breasts and genitals. Sex offenders are um, people who use power and control. He would frequently talk to me about being naked and said he liked At the end of the day, to be naked. People can achieve justice for the crime that they've experienced, then it's going to be worth it worth their while in the end. And if you have any additional information, you should certainly contact the New South Wales Police Sex Crime Squad. Well, now back to Japan, and Carl Stefanovic is amidst the turmoil and the displaced in the city of Sendai. And Carl, is it fair to say, is, is that city where you are the staging post for the search and rescue operations, also for, for any aid that will go into the, those drastically affected areas? Yeah, yeah, very much so. Well, the, the word meltdown, I think, you know, it's a big word for everybody, isn't it? Thanks very much, Carl. We'll speak with you shortly. Carl Stefanovic there. Now we will cross live to CNN's Anna Corrin, who is Ishinomaki. It's a port city just north of Sendai. Anna, thanks for your time. Just put us all in the picture. Australians are, are learning about Japanese geography very rapidly. Whereabouts are you and, and how has city, that city been affected? Uh, Tracy, we are northeast of uh, Sendai, so uh, a couple of hours north. It's, it's not that far uh, as far as, as geography goes, but to get here, it certainly took a couple of hours. That's because some of the roads are impassable. Uh, many of them are, so are just locked off. So are, are finding the bodies of the elderly, Tracy. All right, Anna, it's not a pretty picture at all. Thank you very much for your time.
That was CNN's Anna Corrin. Next on A Current Affair, you just might be crying out for a little bit of light relief. The designer to the royals, just what will Kate be wearing? It most probably will be different in every way from Diana's dress.